So for those of you who don't have a big thing with film criticism in YouTube, like knowing the film critic space, you might not have seen the recent video by Chris Stuckman talking about Madam Web or really not talking about it, opened up a large discourse about the guy between a variety of different video makers, ranging from the critical drinker, who I don't agree with on often, but does have some decent points. And then there's others who have had a lot more of a defined, less criticizing, less kind of bashing on, more of an introspective sort of discussion about it. I found him the other day, Nuclear, <laughs> Nuclear Paltry Productions has probably a much better video about it than I felt the drinkers think nuclear here. He actually brought up some good points talking about the past, about Chris's history, and just how much of an influential video reviewer he used to be. And in some ways, I can understand some of the decision ideas that he's done. Like the idea of just not giving a review for things, I will admit there's a lot of people, like, say for IGN, first thing I do before I even read the discussion is I scroll down to the number, and then I go back up and I read it at down. The idea of what he was doing was to try and have it be more about a discourse, which, again, that makes sense. The whole idea of film criticism and going to the movies with friends is that you stand outside after the movie and you talk about it. I got where the idea was coming from there. However inability to criticize things anymore especially madam webb where he just spends what 11 minutes talking around the subject rather than actually talking about it and it's come to bite him like the video right now has a even spread of likes and dislikes i just wanted to give kind of my thoughts about just what was going on with chris to be honest and i'm not saying this for the obvious reason let me explain after i say why I kind of stopped watching Chris after The Last Jedi review. Now, I wasn't a person who hated it. I wasn't a person who thought it was one of the worst movies of all time. I just could not understand how willing he was to overlook clear narrative flaws in the movie. And he also was saying, like, I feel like I need to see this movie a second time. That's That doesn't work. When you watch a movie the first time, unless... You were not paying attention unless you did not give the movie your full attention like you should when you go see a movie in the theater. If you're one of those assholes is on the phone, fuck off, get out of the theater. Then you would have your theory, your thought, your idea, your criticism, your opinion of the movie in your mind already. Sure, there might be some things you might not have noticed, like little tidbits here and there, and you get that from a second watch. But the overall structure, character, delivery of the movie, you get the first time around. And so when he said that he needed to see it a second time to really give it that kind of view, I was like, what? What happened? And then he did that follow-up thing with the Nostalgia Critic, like one of the last Nostalgia Critic videos I've ever watched. We're going back to like 2017 here, if I'm correct. And I remember even then they were kind of like, eh, about some of the problems with that movie, but they kind of overstepped it. And I was like, well, Chris, you you, you know, you didn't talk about those when you reviewed the movie the first time. So I kind of fell off of him. I, I didn't watch him for that because I felt that it was so clearly his thought of this should be good rather than what it actually was. I When I watched it, I gave it a three out of seven. I liked some of the aspects of it, but I definitely felt that as an overall piece, it was going to hurt the franchise as well as there were just some clear logic gaps in the movie. Not to say that Star Wars is based on logic. It's just a simpleton could have been like, you know what, that doesn't, that doesn't work. And it's not the things that I'm talking about, just... The whole idea of it being a space chase. But again, there's a video I've done about that. I'll probably have it up here. Something I wanted to talk about in terms of why Chris might be afraid to do criticism like he used to do. In part, it's very much about him getting his movie made and getting into the Hollywood kind of uh, atmosphere. And I, I get that. You have to do a lot of schmoozing when you are trying to. And he says he's submitted scripts over and over and over again. He's gotten rejected over and over and over and over again. That is how it is. Like, there are unfortunately not many breaks when it comes to getting into the film industry. I have never submitted a script myself. I don't find myself to be a director-writer. But I have seen it having worked in the industry. I have seen how 
It's not really about what you bring. It's about who you know. Because I have worked on some utter fucking trash people. I have worked with some amazingly incompetent people. I have seen some people who have zero experience. Zero experience. Be in the director's chair on certain productions. And the whole thing falling apart. Whereas there are people who I am literally standing right beside. Who are still in the lower position of where they are, despite having the skill, the knowledge, the indie lower budget making experience to be in that chair. But it's because they don't know the right people. It's because they don't have the right personality. That's Hollywood, baby. But going back to Chris, I can understand your fear of it, that you maybe you've gone into it and they've told you that you shouldn't. But at that point, I almost feel that you should maybe disclose something. Just say, you know what, I'm changing because of my lifestyle. I know he's done a few updates about like other things. That's neither here nor there. My focus of this video is about his lack of criticism. And then going back to another experience, I'm going way back here. I, I have a feeling that I might have started all the way back. Ooh, fucking Batman v Superman. When Zack Snyder fanatics, I've had a few funny chuckles with a couple of y'all but these guys doxed him like they called his dad they harassed him when he gave just his thoughts about how batman v superman could have had a little bit of a better structure that was it and he was fully right to do so that movie's fucking awful and he got harassed and personally attacked for it i can see how things might have started to snowball at this point and that ball got more and more because that would affect anyone doesn't matter what you think or what you say you feel like you would think in that situation that would have affected anybody and that is probably one of the costs of fame on youtube i'm happy where i am truly truly i am happy where i am it's been cool to see some progress over the years I, but I would never want to be as big as Stuckman is. I would never want to be that big because I just wouldn't want that pressure, that intrusive look into my own life because there would be people who would do it. There would be people who would look into that and I'm, I'm happy where I am. With that amount of fame, with that amount of attention that is being drawn to him, yeah, it's going to get to you after a while. And I feel bad for that. I feel bad for him on that aspect but i cannot excuse his lack of criticism on that and like i said maybe it's just the headspace he's in right now maybe we'll see if he goes back to it in a while going back to all of it i do understand in part kind of where he's coming from in terms of negative 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 because youtube has a big sphere of that of negativity bashing there is a difference, however, a very clear difference between actual proper criticism and raging. And I have seen both. But when people group both of those together, like a really good example right now, is True Detective Night Country. Everyone who has very legitimate criticisms of that season is being slotted in with the people who are being admittedly quite vile about the show. But that's not how it should be. These people, this big, large group who have legitimate concerns and criticisms about that show should not be pushed in with this. And that goes back all the way to The Last Jedi, everyone. Because that's when it started. Last Jedi is where that started. Everyone who had legitimate concerns and criticisms got looped in with the people who were being pretty fucking vile to... Kelly Tran, I think it was her name, who played Rose, and all of that. But that's not how it should go. That is not how criticism should go. I hope the old Chris comes back. One of my favorite videos still to this day that he made was his in-depth discussion about Drive that just helped me further love that movie because of that dissection and that video. I will see Shelby Oaks when it comes out. I'm interested to see what he can do. But at the same time... You know, sometimes when you make something, it's not like the be-all, end-all. Like, it's just a project. And 
to be afraid of criticism is something that when you are making a medium, you have to be accepted to it. I'm a photographer and I had an issue for a long time of being afraid of criticism or defending myself against the criticism. And I had to learn to be, you know, all open to it. I had to learn from these critiques, from these mistakes to better myself. Because if you don't, if you don't fail, if you don't falter, and if you don't learn from your mistakes, you're doomed to repeat them. You're doomed to never learn from them. And that's like a discussion about just society in general right now. I feel that almost it is much more opening and welcoming to not get criticism for your failures. But that's neither here nor there. That's a whole other kind of subject. But anyways, guys, that's my ramble about Chris. I hope he's well. My my main concern is I hope he's okay because he's he's getting a lot right now from it. And not to say that he doesn't deserve it. I, he definitely deserves to get called out on certain things. I mean, just like, come on, Chris, come back. Come back to us. If you can't, if you can't do it because you're under Hollywood pressure and whatnot, okay, just mention that in the least I'm going to get fucked over by bigwigs way you can because then people would understand some probably won't some probably would probably call you a sellout but having worked in this industry and seen some pretty fucking despicable shit happen under the table i would understand and like i said you won't get everyone to understand but you would get some anyways that's all for me guys i hope you're doing well i hope you're enjoying your day it's pretty miserable outside right now, but that's it. That's enough for me rambling. I'll see you guys next time.